What if I told you that the future of global energy and mobility may not be decided in Silicon Valley, Berlin, or Tokyo, but instead between Moscow and Africa? Moscow's sudden interest in Maxwell Chikumbutso's revolutionary electric vehicle is not just about cars. It is about rewriting the rules of power in a world where sanctions and Western dominance have boxed Russia into a corner. Maxwell Chikumbutso, the Zimbabwean inventor who stunned the world with his self-powered EV that runs on radio frequency technology, has now caught the eye of Russian officials searching for technological breakthroughs beyond the reach of Western embargoes. This EV is not like Tesla or Toyota hybrids. It does not need charging stations. It does not depend on lithium batteries imported from China. Instead, it harnesses radio frequency energy, a technology so radical that many dismissed it as impossible, until prototypes started moving silently across African roads with no external power source. For Russia, still grappling with restrictions on oil sales, sanctions on technology imports, and an economy forced to pivot away from the West, this invention is more than a car. It is a potential weapon in the global energy chessboard. Imagine a vehicle fleet that never stops for fuel, never plugs into a charging grid, and never consumes imported lithium-ion batteries. For a country that has relied heavily on fossil fuel exports for decades, the implications are staggering. Russia sees in Chikumbutso's EV a chance to leapfrog the traditional energy economy and break free from Western-controlled supply chains. But why Africa and why now? The truth is, Africa is becoming a hotbed of innovation precisely because it is not constrained by the legacy systems of Europe or America. Where the West is locked into protecting its oil giants and its trillion-dollar EV infrastructure, Africa can afford to take bold leaps. Chikumbutso's invention is one of those leaps, and Moscow knows it. Sources close to Russian state technology agencies have hinted at early-stage talks between Maxwell's team and Russian investors eager to test the limits of RF-based mobility. If these talks bear fruit, the collaboration could reshape not only Russia's transportation sector but also its strategic stance in global geopolitics. The Kremlin has already shown its willingness to pivot toward non-Western alliances, forging deeper ties with China, India, and African nations in trade and defense. But this time, the move is technological, and that makes it even more threatening to the established powers. Washington and Brussels have been quick to dismiss the feasibility of a self-powered car. They call it pseudoscience, unverified, a trick at best. But the silence of Moscow is telling. Instead of mocking, Russia is watching carefully, testing quietly, and preparing its own counter to Western mockery with hard results. The Russian press has begun reporting cautiously on Africa's new wave of innovation, highlighting Chikambutso as an unconventional genius and presenting his work as proof that breakthroughs are no longer the monopoly of Western labs. Behind the scenes, Russian engineers are said to be studying the principles of RF energy capture and conversion, hoping to integrate the system not just into cars but into drones, ships, and even military hardware. This is where the story becomes even bigger. For decades, Global power has rested on the control of oil and gas pipelines, on the flow of petrodollars, and on the infrastructure of energy supply chains. But what happens when vehicles no longer need oil or electricity grids to move? What happens when a car can power itself indefinitely, using ambient energy drawn from the very air around us? That is the disruptive question Moscow is now entertaining. It is not just about beating sanctions. It is about reshaping the entire structure of dependency in the global system. For African nations, Russia's involvement could mean investment, scaling, and legitimacy. Maxwell has faced years of skepticism and funding challenges because his technology was simply too radical for conservative investors. But if Russia steps in with its state-backed resources, Africa's self-powered EV could find its way from small workshops into mass production. The first factories might not appear in Detroit or Stuttgart, but in Harare or Moscow. This would be a symbolic reversal of centuries of technological dependency. Africa, long exploited for its minerals and resources, would now be exporting ideas powerful enough to bend the will of superpowers. And Russia, long painted as an energy dinosaur dependent on fossil fuels, would suddenly present itself as a futuristic pioneer. Of course, the West would not sit idle. Already, whispers in policy circles suggest that if Russia formally embraces Chikumbutso's tech, 
the reaction from Washington and Brussels would be swift. Expect attempts to discredit the technology further, to impose restrictions on intellectual property transfers, and to undermine Africa's credibility in innovation. But the tide of history may be harder to stop, because while the West debates feasibility, prototypes in Africa keep running without fuel or charging stations. Ordinary people witness it with their own eyes, and in this information age, no narrative control can suppress lived experience. Russia understands this. That is why it is moving quietly but decisively. For Moscow, this is more than technology, it is survival. Energy sanctions have squeezed revenues, and Western dominance in EV markets has limited Russia's room to maneuver. But if Russia can back an African innovation that breaks the very model of energy dependency, it not only survives but redefines its role in the 21st century. Imagine Russian cities filled with fleets of self-powered taxis, buses, and delivery vans, all moving without consuming a drop of oil or a single kilowatt from the grid. Imagine the military implications to tanks, drones, and transport vehicles that never need to refuel. This would send shockwaves through NATO and beyond. And yet, at the center of all this geopolitics is one man, Maxwell Chikambutso, a self-taught inventor from Zimbabwe, often ridiculed, often ignored, now courted by one of the most powerful states on earth. His journey from a small lab in Africa to the halls of Moscow's policymakers illustrates a seismic shift in where innovation can come from. No longer is the narrative only about Western geniuses in Silicon Valley garages. Now, a new narrative is emerging about African minds reshaping the destiny of nations. This is why the story of Russia joining the race around Maxwell's EV is not just about technology. It is about identity, pride, survival, and power and the world is only beginning to wake up to its consequences. The deeper you look into Moscow's sudden attraction to Africa's self-powered EV, the clearer it becomes that this is not just about escaping sanctions, but about leapfrogging the West in one clean move. The Kremlin knows that conventional EV industries are shackled to infrastructure that costs trillions, charging stations, grid expansion, and rare earth mining. These are areas where Russia lags behind. It has no Tesla-scale ecosystem, no Silicon Valley to push mass-market innovation, and no global supply chains to rely on for lithium or cobalt. So instead of playing catch-up in a game designed by the West, Russia is eyeing a new game entirely. One where Maxwell's RF-powered car rewrites the rules. It is a shortcut to supremacy in an industry that was supposed to leave Russia behind. Moscow's advisors see the possibility of sidestepping decades of lost competition. If you cannot win at batteries, why not adopt a system that does not need them? And in that calculation, Africa is not a junior partner. It is the starting line. For decades, Africa was seen as a resource base, a continent to be mined and exploited. But now, with Maxwell's invention, the tables are turning. The raw material that Africa is exporting is no longer just cobalt, gold, or oil. It is intellectual firepower, a radical vision of how energy can work in the 21st century. Russia wants in on that vision because it aligns with its own needs. The pressure of Western sanctions has forced Moscow to look for new alliances, but it has also forced it to think differently about resilience. Resilience today is not only about territory or pipelines, but about the ability to create systems the West cannot control. RF technology in vehicles is exactly that kind of system. If a Russian city can move millions of people daily without a drop of gasoline or a kilowatt hour from the grid, it creates immunity from economic pressure. No oil embargo, no power plant sabotage, no grid failure can paralyze transport. That is a kind of strategic independence the West cannot match easily. It explains why Moscow is willing to risk credibility by exploring a technology dismissed as impossible by so many experts. Because if it works, even at a modest scale, the payoff is revolutionary. Africa, for its part, is watching carefully. Partnership with Russia offers both opportunity and risk. On the one hand, Russian investment could unlock mass production, factories, and global exposure for Maxwell's work. On the other hand, there is the danger of Africa's breakthrough being co-opted, controlled, or militarized in ways that strip it of its original promise. That is why the next chapter in this story is not only technological but political. 
How Africa negotiates its partnership with Moscow will decide whether this EV becomes a shared symbol of progress or just another tool in a superpower rivalry. Already, African policymakers are being courted. Delegations, cultural exchanges, and trade deals are setting the stage for deeper cooperation. But the question remains, will Africa hold onto ownership of its invention or will it hand over the keys in exchange for short-term gains? The West, meanwhile, faces its own dilemma. If Washington and Brussels continue to ridicule Chikambutso's technology, they risk being blindsided if Moscow actually scales it. If they admit the possibility that it works, they legitimize Africa's innovation and fuel Russian momentum. So for now, they oscillate between dismissal and quiet observation. But behind closed doors, intelligence agencies are surely running their own tests. The stakes are too high to ignore. A world where cars, buses, and trucks no longer need fuel would collapse entire industries overnight. Oil giants would lose relevance. Battery empires in China, South Korea, and the US would see their trillion dollar future dissolve. And the countries that control RF-based vehicles would rise as the new energy superpowers. That is why Moscow's move is both bold and logical. It is the kind of gamble a nation under siege must take. Too desperate to play safe, too visionary to remain passive. And it is why this African-Russian connection could become the defining alliance of the next decade. The irony is unmistakable. For years, the world laughed at Maxwell, calling him a dreamer at best and a fraud at worst. But in the shadows of geopolitics, his work has become the spark of a technological arms race. From Harare's modest workshops to Moscow's steel-gray strategy rooms, the same invention is being discussed with seriousness that the West never afforded it. And history has a way of rewarding those who believe early. If Russia bets right, it could redefine its global role not as a fossil fuel dinosaur, but as the unlikely champion of clean, independent mobility. If Africa holds firm, it could cement its place as the birthplace of one of the greatest technological revolutions in history. And if the West continues to underestimate, it may find itself chasing shadows in a game it thought it already won. This is not just about a car. It is about who controls the future. Moscow knows it. Africa feels it. And the world is starting to wake up. Because when Russia joins the race for Africa's self-powered EV, it is not only shaking up the automotive industry. It is shaking the very foundation of how nations project power, survive sanctions, and dream about tomorrow. And in that race, the outcome will not only determine who drives the future, it will decide who owns it.